Hi, I'm Kara Bowen. I'm the Assistant Director for Law Admissions at the University of Memphis School of Law. And today we have five of our wonderful student ambassadors answering five questions that might be helpful to you as a prospective law student. So first I'll have our ambassadors introduce themselves, tell us what year you are and where you're from. Hi, my name is Trenton Woodley. I'm a 2L and I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. Hi, my name is Rachel Moore. I am a 3L and I am from Lebanon, Tennessee. Hey, I'm Wynn Duncan. I'm a 2L and I'm uh, also from Memphis. Hi, uh, my name is Raina Todd. I'm a 2L and I'm from Camden, Arkansas. Hey, I'm London Vaughn. I'm a 2L and I'm from Dyersburg, Tennessee. All right, thank you all. So to start, um, I wanna know how did you prepare for the LSAT? We have a lot of students that are probably preparing and testing this cycle to apply. Um, so what did you do to prepare? Well, to prepare for the LSAT, I went and uh, purchased books that would give me a good baseline of what I can expect from the LSAT. I also uh, practiced in a book that was sent from the Law School Admissions uh, Commission um, so that I could be better prepared uh, once I got there. And then I dedicated at least three months of time in order to make sure that I could adequately uh, answer all the questions and be able to get through all the practice exams uh, to give me the best chance to get the best score I could. Um, so for me, um, Amazon, or you can get it from other retailers, I'm sure have booklets that are just past LSAT books, and each book has five tests in it, I believe. Um, and I would just, I think I bought like three or four of those books, and I don't think I ever took the full exam, but I would take um, the subject that I was struggling in, whether it be the word problems or something else, I would just focus on those. And that really, really helped me, because it was right from old exams, and I could draw over that book and make charts. And so when I got to the actual LSAT and I took the LSAT twice, um, I knew what to expect when I went in. Um, so I really encourage just using old LSAT tests. Uh, I took a course that was provided by um, Kaplan and it was pretty expensive, but I thought it was uh, well worth it. I believe it was six weeks with about 12 hours of um, in-class instruction per week. And I found it very helpful, got to learn some tips um, from some of their LSAT experts that I probably wouldn't have otherwise. Um, got to take uh, several um, practice LSATs, old tests, like Rachel was just saying, which were helpful. So um, if you're looking for, if you're like me, I, I'm, I'm a person who can't, I struggle to self-pace. So if you're like that, I highly recommend uh, taking taking a LSAT prep course. Um, I purchased the Power Score books and self study with those, and I looked up online kind of a self study schedule based on uh, the time I allotted myself to take it. So I studied for three months. So I kind of looked up a three month study plan and I worked while I studied or was working at the same time I was studying. So luckily I had a low maintenance job. So whenever I could, I would open my books at work and then study for about four hours once I got off and did that for three months. So I didn't study as long as some of my other classmates because I decided to go to law school last minute. And so I had like a month by the time I signed up to take the LSAT and decided to go to law school before I took it. So I got um, ordered a Kaplan book off of Amazon and I tried to work through that, um, just a little bit of it every night until I took the LSAT. And I did have a chance on a Saturday to take a full practice test. And I think taking the full practice test was very beneficial because it let me know the time constraints that I was going to have if I need if I was struggling on one part I knew how to compensate for that on the exam so I definitely recommend some kind of prep book and taking a full test 
Awesome. So the good news for students now is that LSAC has worked with Khan Academy to have a um, fully free prep available on their website. It's uh, made by the people that make the test. Um, LSAC also provides a list of accredited programs that have access to their test questions. So when you're going to purchase a class or any books, I recommend checking out the LSAC resources first. And then also, um, if you're going to invest in other materials, take a look at their list um, of companies that they, they work with. So <clears throat> would you have done anything differently um, as, as far as, um, you know, tested again or started earlier? I think I probably would have started earlier. Um, the score I got, I took it twice, and I got the exact same score both times. Um, and so there were some connectors that I feel like I missed in taking that test. Um, um, but at the same time, um, three months, I feel like it's good enough time. But it was more to the fact that I also was working in my career, my previous career at that time. And so just trying to balance that plus taking the test. I felt like the, the best decision was to do three months, but probably maybe add another month or even six months out probably would have helped me score even better. Um, what I would have done differently is I probably would have just studied more because I was very lax in my studying. Um, and I probably studied four or five months. Um, and I did take it twice and my score did go up the second time. Um, and I think though seeing my scores on my real test the first time because you know I have to be in the zone to actually perform well um, really helped me see what I was doing wrong with the first exam. So um, I did like that I took the exam twice. So if you have the extra money to spend to take it again and um, just wanna see if you can do better, I really suggest that. But I probably would have just studied longer and probably harder. Like uh, like Trenton, I took it twice and made the same score two times. Um, and I think what I did, I took the class before the the first test. And then before the second test, I didn't create any sort of schedule or study plan. I just sort of left it to myself to study whenever I had the time. And uh, that was not uh, obviously successful since I made the same score. So I would uh, encourage uh, encourage you to, if you're gonna self pace your study before you start that, uh, like Raina was saying, uh, make a good syllabus, a plan that you are, are gonna hold yourself to. Um, because if you approach it like I did, like I did the second test and just sort of tell yourself that you're gonna study when you get free time, you're not gonna do it and you're gonna end up wasting your time making the same score twice in a row. Yeah, I agree with um, a lot of what um, the rest of my peers have said. I definitely would have probably pushed my studying out to at least six months. Um, I only took, and I also would have, I only took the test once. So I regret not at least trying um, to take it another time because I was kind of disappointed with my score, but I just didn't think at the time, I didn't think you know, the cost versus uh, trying again would really add up to or result in like a really substantial difference. But looking back, I think it's worth at least trying if like they said, it, it's financially feasible to try and uh, if you're not pleased with your score, take it a second time. So like Raina, I only took the LSAT one time and I definitely would have taken it again. But by the time I got my score back, it was already mid-February and I was already late to the game. So I didn't want to take more time to apply again, but I definitely would have taken it again. And I definitely would have studied for a longer than one month because by the time I got to the test, I was exhausted and I was overwhelmed and I was just stressed. So I definitely would have done things different. So. Thank you all, that's, that's great advice. Um, for students, remember that the University of Memphis only considers your highest test score. So you can really only help yourself by um, taking the chance and testing again, even if you already have a score. 
Also, LSAC does have a fee waiver program. So um, if costs are an issue, I encourage you to apply for their waiver program that covers um, some tests, um, some prep materials, and um, a portion of the fees because that, that certainly does add up. So next question, um, what just general application advice do you have for students that are applying this year? I would say to, um, to not trifle about the personal statement. Your personal statement, I feel like, can be a, a big moment in, in the application. Um, for the most part, everybody's going to have good GPA. For the most part, everybody's going to have some kind of uh, extracurriculars or outside of school kind of thing that's going to help boost what they're looking for in a resume. But look into that personal statement. And I said it because I asked people, uh, professors, once I got admitted about you know, what really helped. And they said they really liked my personal statement. I actually took a while to write my personal statement um, over the course of my LSAT uh, test. I actually took that amount of time to actually write it, so about six months. But it was well worth it because it was a short statement, but it was from the heart and it was what I really meant. And it was something that helped them connect. So I would say, um, look into that and don't don't just think they're, they're just gonna pass over it. Um, they're gonna look at it because they, they want diverse student bodies and they want real personalities. They're not looking just for GPAs or transcripts. They want real people to be law students. Absolutely. Will you also tell us a little bit about how you um, applied and were accepted to our TIP program? That's the Tennessee Institute for Pre-Law Summer Program. Sure. So uh, I was a student who I did all right, but I didn't do the absolute best when I was an undergrad. And then there was, amount, there was some amount of time between me finishing undergrad and then actually deciding to going to law school. I had a career working in government and politics before, and I said, I want to do this now. So um, I didn't think I would have a chance to get right in. So I did apply in the application process for them to review my application to see uh, if they would, I would be admitted into TIP, which would allow me to do a month's study and coursework. And then if I complete basically that amount of time and do well, then I would be admitted into law school. Um, and doing that, that application process is nothing more than just adding another statement uh, saying why you feel like you should qualify for TIP, what is important to you. Of course, um, it's open to Tennessee residents and residents of the border counties, in Arkansas, Mississippi. Uh, so um, it's highly encouraging. And I would say it's not just for um, those people who feel like they're on the fringe. Some people who feel like they maybe could have got in, I would say apply the tip. Um, it was a worthwhile experience for me because I got to simulate two, three classes that I would end up taking my first year. Um, and that helped me out a lot as far as um, adjusting me towards law school and that process. Thank you. We have more um, information about the tip program available on our website. Um, we're also glad to help with questions, but we'll pick up with Rachel about um, general application advice. Yeah, so my big advice would be to um, ask professors for letters of recommendation um, early uh, or wh whoever you're getting your letters of recommendations from. Um, they're doing you a really big favor by doing this. And I remember I asked one of mine like, like really early and he said, oh, good, because I make a rule to only do like two or three letters of recommendation a semester. So a lot of professors really limit themselves to how much they do um, and when they're gonna do them. And you don't wanna ask someone for a favor and then keep emailing them saying, hey, it's due next week. You know, you wanna give them ample time um, and to actually, you know, for them to write about you. And they do look at your letters of recommendation. Um, it's optional, but it is kind of the icing on the cake. Um, and I really encourage if you're applying to definitely try uh, to get them because my letters of recommendation I submitted to, and I'm really glad I did. Um, I, I have another thing to say about uh, uh, letters of recommendation. Um, I was a, a, a little more bashful in getting mine than um, Rachel uh, was. And what I learned from that is that professors really uh, want to help you. They wanna write uh, letters for you. They, they, they wanna help you uh, succeed. 
um, after undergrad. And so if you're a person like me who, you know, didn't want to impose and um, things like that, don't think that way. Um, go ahead and like Rachel said, get your requests in early because uh, professors, particularly those that you've built a relationship with, uh, really do want to help you and want to write uh, good glowing letters of recommendation for you. Uh, and also, uh, you know, apply early, um, you know, the earlier, the better. Um, and so uh, apply early. Don't, uh, don't waste any time on that. Uh, yeah, I will uh, echo the apply early sentiment. And with that, I think when you're deciding to apply to law schools, I think you should, my advice is to be very intentional about that because for me, I knew going in that I wasn't going to apply to 10 different schools. I, I knew I was going to apply to um, a select few that I really felt like one, I had a really good chance of getting in and that I really wanted to go to. And so when you start early, then you have more time to research these schools, you have more time to get all your materials together. And with that, I think it just ends up, um, lessening the amount of stress that you're going through, having to keep up with um, all of these schools, their different um, requirements, what they might want in their personal statements, uh, gathering deadlines for letters of rec and all of that. So I think being intentional about where you want to apply is uh, will really uh, benefit you in the long run. So as I've said before, I was definitely in a time crunch when I was applying. I knew that I had to get my application in if I even wanted to be considered for the upcoming school year. So like my peers said, like I was intentional about what schools I applied to. I think I only applied to three schools. Um, and if I didn't get in, then I was going to do something else and apply again. And I also made sure to ask for my recommendation letters as soon as I knew I was going to be applying because they can turn those in on their free will. Like they don't send you to them first. They it might automatically go to the LSAC website and they submit on there. So I wanted to make sure that they submitted it in enough time to make sure my application would be considered along with those recommendation letters. Um, and I also, I don't know where I was going with that, but yeah. <laughs> Great. Yes. As soon as you have your LSAC account set up, you're able to send the invitations to your professors or other professionals that are writing you letters or recommendations. So um, you're able to get started on that. Our application cycle is rolling. And this year we've added a new program that is um, similar to an early decision. If you have all of your application materials ready and you're ready to apply and you submit before December 1st, you'll get your application decision before the end of the year. So that gives you more time um, to do research and um, ask us questions after having your decision. And it's a non-binding decision. So it's just finding out early. And then we continue to review applications on a rolling basis, usually through the June LSAT um, of the following year. However, earlier is better. So my next question is, what criteria did you consider and what was important to you when you were deciding where um, to apply which law schools? So for me, um, being um, someone older, I mean, I'm kind of set in where I want to be. I knew that I wanted to be close to home. I'm from Memphis. I went to high school in Memphis. I went, um, I went away to school, but only two hours away. And so I wanted to be close to here, not to mention the fact that I knew wherever I wanted to go to school was somewhere I wanted to actually practice, somewhere I actually wanted to do what I wanted to do. Uh, and here in Memphis is where I want to do. I want to work in housing. I want to work with, with property and real estate. And, uh, and so I know those needs here and I wanted to uh, be close to that action. Uh, it was important for me to know uh, precisely what I want to do and where I want to be to do it. And so Memphis was in my list. I had Ole Miss in my list. I had uh, UT in my list, but uh, Memphis was really my, my first choice. Um, it truly was. Um, Dean McClellan came to visit uh, Tennessee Martin, where I went to undergrad. She was fantastic, phenomenal at the time when I didn't think I even wanted to go to law school and made me rethink that and, and think about what I really want to do. 
Um, and then years later, I just remembered how great she was. And remember how, you no, know, if she was that great, then the rest, everybody else has got to be great too. Uh, also, the facilities are top notch. They're second to none. You couldn't go to a better law school and, and study in a better law school building. Um, and I'll put that to anybody. Um, but as far as those factors, location, um, friendliness of and and like like likeness of the faculty and staff, and then uh, knowing where I, what I want to do and where I want to do it, uh, those were very important to me. Um, so when I was like considering law schools, I was looking at really um, student experience and uh, jobs. Like also, bar passage rate came into that because often bar passage rate is you know correlates with jobs, but. Um, I used lots of websites that kind of compared law schools and I actually did apply to like seven or eight law schools because I really wasn't sure where I was going to go. Um, but I love Memphis because it has um, this stellar externship program that gets you experience in the legal community where I had no experience at all in law and um, I've definitely utilized that. I've done the externship twice. Um, I've done a clinic. So when I was looking at law schools, I was really looking at the student experience. Um, kind of our passage and mostly like the job outlooks. And um, I saw that Memphis had that and I'm from Nashville and it wasn't too far away and it's three and a half hours. So it's like the perfect amount of way from home. Um, so yeah, so Memphis just worked out perfectly and had all those things. I think one of the big mistakes that you can make is trying to fit yourself with a law school. And what you really ought to do is find a law school that um, fits you. And uh, the way you do that is the first thing is you got to uh, sort of do an honest uh, self inspection. You know, think about your strengths and weaknesses, how you learn best, um, travel cost, all of these considerations. You've got to think about, uh, you've got to think about them for yourself. And then once you sort of have that established, start looking for schools that fit with those criteria. And then uh, after you sort of find that group, then you can start, I think, thinking about uh, a lot of the stuff that Rachel was just talking about, bar passage rates, experiential learning, um, you know, the community on campus, those types of things. Um, but I think, you know, too many times people try to fit themselves in a law school rather than the other way around. Um, so all of the schools I applied to and I um, applied to five, I put them all in a spreadsheet and uh, filled in all the characteristics or qualities that were important to me. And some of the big ones were um, like Trenton said, I didn't wanna be far from home. So I'm from Southern Arkansas and I went to undergrad an hour away in Jonesboro. So I knew I was gonna apply to both Arkansas schools, um, but I didn't wanna be somewhere where I'd have to catch a plane to come back home. So that was important. Um, uh, the I really looked at the clinics and the externships that all the schools offer because I knew I was, I wanted to do um, get involved in those while I was there because I know I wanted to get that practical legal experience. And so from there, I kind of just narrowed down what aligned with where I saw myself career-wise and interest-wise. And once I started applying, what kind of scholarships I got. And so I kind of ranked them from there and made my decision from there. So like pretty much everyone else, I knew I wanted to go to school um, somewhere kind of close to home. I'm from Dyersburg, so it's an hour and a half north of Memphis. Um, I went to Mississippi State, so I applied to the Mississippi schools and then also applied to um, obviously Memphis and then um, Arkansas just because like I knew they were in like the hour range that I really wanted to drive. I didn't want to have to, like Raina said, fly home. But I also um, talked to students that went to each school that I was applying to because I wanted to know their own personal experiences. I wanted to know what they liked about the school, what they didn't like about the school, and mostly asked questions about their professors. I wanted to know if their, prof if their professors were open to talking, if they were willing to help you when you needed help, if they explained things well. And that was the thing that I was really um, focused on because like in undergrad, I didn't really get the um, like personal professor experience. Like I didn't really feel like they cared sometimes. 
Um, so I really wanted to make sure that my law school professors cared about us because I knew that I was going to need some help like the law's hard. Um, and I really, when I talked to students, I went to Memphis, I heard raving reviews about the professors and that's definitely still true. Wonderful. So we have our, our last question. Um, you all obviously chose Memphis and we're so happy that you did. So now that you're a current student, um, what are the best things about Memphis Law? Uh, I would say the best thing about Memphis Law is really the students. Um, and that's, that sounds very cliche, but it's very true in our case. Um, I think even one else, well, the one else experience this year has been um, been jilted, you know, because of worldwide events. But I know, um, and other people who are two of us now who are one else with me last year can tell you um, that the experience, in, in at least in my eyes, uh, interacting with people who were already there, who are two L's and three L's, and even people who are, who had graduated and who are alumni, um, those people um, they were they were they were welcoming. There was there's no there's no feeling of oh you're you're you know you're young kids, not like undergrad where you're kind of separated from everybody. You're all kind of close in age anyway. You're all adults and you all understand where you're going and everybody's trying to make sure everybody um, brings themselves up. It's not like some of the law schools where everybody's super competitive and people are stepping on each other's toes. Uh, I feel like we are really looking out for one another. Um, somebody needs help, we're, we're trying to get them help. Somebody needs a chance to chill out and hang out. We're doing that too. We're really trying to be there for each other and we want everybody to hit the finish line at the same time with, each, with ourselves so that we can uh, attack the goals that we want to for ourselves and for our group and then for our community, uh, I think in my opinion, which is most important. So the students are the, the best part of Memphis Law. Yeah, I would say um, pretty much the same thing. I remember like at orientation, our professor was like, you'll make the best friends like you've ever made. And I'm like, yeah, well, whatever. But like, no, like you really do. You really do. Everyone's super, um, you meet people like when you sit in class um, throughout the semester, you guys share notes. Um, people uh, like share outlines. Um, we all sit in the student lounge together. Uh, it's very, everyone's very supportive of each other. Um, I had never been to law school. I mean, obviously never been, but I didn't know much about the legal community. And um, when I got here, I was just amazed at how friendly and sweet and everyone wants you to succeed. Not only the professors, but other students want you to succeed. Um, it's just a very positive environment and the students and the community in Memphis, because lots of the people who work in the legal community from Memphis, the majority of them are from U of M. And so there's a really strong community both in the school and out of the school where ev really everyone I've come into has just been so helpful. We'll read over stuff, look at my resume, just get lunch. Um, it's just a very positive environment. And um, I just really love the legal community that Memphis has. I agree with what uh, Trenton and Rachel have said. I don't think the community uh, aspect both inside the walls of the law school and outside um, can be understated. Um, and another great thing about uh, Memphis Law School that I didn't know going in, but has become very clear now, and Rachel touched on earlier, uh, is the uh, experiential learning program. There is an abundance of internships, externships, opportunities to go work while you're in school in the legal community here in Memphis. Um, and our professors and administrators are excellent at finding those opportunities and putting students uh, in opportunities to succeed. Uh, and that's a big thing, you know, um, you can only learn so much uh, in a classroom, a lot of learning has to be done, sort of throwing you in the deep end. And uh, th those opportunities um, uh, to do that are in abundance uh, here at Memphis. Yeah, I've got to um, emphasize everything that uh, Trenton, Rachel, and uh, Wynn have already said. Our faculty here is phenomenal. I remember my 1L year being so shocked and impressed, really, our first week of classes, how it was nothing like um, the movies uh, were. In our, like, I was completely expecting to be intimidated and terrified, but um our professors were just so relaxed and just so uh wanting to just 
convey knowledge and convey what they know about the law and in a way that they want you to understand, they want to work with you through um, their questions. And so I was just really pleased with that. And I knew that when I made the decision to come here, I have not regretted it since. Um, completely co-signed everything about the legal community. Um, all of uh, the Memphis professionals that I've come into contact with have been um, so helpful and so outstanding. So um, definitely the faculty and the greater Memphis legal community. I'm basically gonna echo what everyone else has said. Um, like I talked about in the previous question, the faculty has been amazing. They will email you back at midnight just to answer a question that you had about the previous class, or they will put aside whatever they have to answer that question. Even if you see them in the hallway, like, hey, professor, I didn't understand this. And they will talk to you after class. They're willing to do whatever they can. And the students, you always hear about law school students are cutthroat, like they're just trying to step on you to get the better grade, to get the higher rank, to get the better job. And that is not true whatsoever. Yes, law school is competitive in a sense, but you will feel like a family with your section. Like you will go through the hard long days of writing a memo together and you will go through the joys of finishing your all of your finals and you will go out and celebrate together like you are truly a family and I think that's probably my favorite part and the law school building I love the building every time I walk in there it feels like home it's just so comforting there's always a smiling face even when you don't want to be smiled at and there's always some place to be in a quiet study place just to take a nap to cry to study for that next exam well, thank you all so much for sharing your time. I hope that your advice is helpful for prospective students. I also would love to remind you that Dr. Sue Ann McClellan and I are really happy to set up um, Zoom meetings, one-on-one -on -one calls, give you advice. We are um, remain accessible for you through this time. And if you would like to talk to or be connected with one of our current students, they're happy to speak with you more about the student experience. Um, we're also glad to put you in touch with one of our professors if you have a certain interest area. So please reach out to us and let us know how we can provide you with the information you need to make the best decision for you. And we hope to see you as part of the Memphis Law family next year. Thank you.